sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Good morning. And welcome to Worship in Jesus' Name on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. I would invite your prayers for Vivian Youngen and her family on the death of her son, Jeff. His funeral service is here at Grace tomorrow at 11 o'clock, and there is a visitation this afternoon from 3 to 5 at George Boom Funeral Home. So please remember Vivian and all her family in your prayers. Some calendar announcements. Today at 11 o'clock is the second of our summer church uh, picnics. So we're meeting at the South Shelter. So that's the one on 16th Street at Frank Olson Park. North, um, and north. north, North, that's right. Last time it was the South Shelter. Now it's the North Shelter. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, off 16th, it's, it is off 16th Street. Um, and it's the theme for this one was barbecues and you could have, signed up to uh, say what you were going to bring, but it, even if you didn't and you don't have anything to bring, just come, because I don't think we've ever run out of food at a church potluck yet. <laughs> so, um, so yes, that's today at 11, and there'll be yard games, and then if you want to stay and swim, the pool opens at 1. Um, also this week, the grief group meets on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, and then um, Next Sunday, Vacation Bible School starts, so it's in the evening and uh, runs Sunday evening through Thursday evenings, and you can still register, and there's uh, paper forms on the information table, or you can also register online. So if you know of kids who would like to come, or neighbor kids, or relatives, friends, uh, they are welcome to attend uh, Bible School, and it's called Happy Camp, Happy Campers, so they'll be doing camp during the week. And then we are starting to collect school supplies for the students at Ideal, our companion com uh, community on the Rosebud. So if you see school supplies out there on sale, there was a list in the newsletter, um, or otherwise it is just the basics. So um, you can start to bring those and we'll get them out there before school starts. And then um, we're also collecting things to make kits for community outreach, and so that's going to be a year-long project, so each month there'll be something that goes in the hygiene kits that they distribute. So this month it's soap and a bar of soap and a washcloth, so if you want to do that, you can also do that. And then as we, after each month when we've got the things, we'll put the kits together and get those over to community outreach. And then while you're here, if you want to do some fun, we're coloring the bulletin board. So pick up a crayon or a colored pencil and fill in a leaf or a flower or a butterfly or something. So uh, just something to do while you're here and uh, color the world with kindness is the theme, reminding us to be kind in the world. And then uh, the coffee tips this month of July are going to Beaver Valley Lutheran Church, which was um, lost their whole education fellowship unit um, in a tornado earlier this summer, so um, just as a way to help them out, all the coffee tips are going to Beaver Valley. And then we are working on the online picture directory, so if you have not yet sent us a picture or taken a picture, Becky, who's in the booth, will take your picture today if you would like, so, um, so that we can uh, keep working on that over the summer. So, um, And then, just a uh, thing, one of our members, John Bayer, is in the Last Call Band, uh, and so they are playing at McKinnon Park tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So if you want to go listen to some music in the park, you can go see John play his trumpet along with everybody else in Last Call. So something fun to do this summer. I think those are all the particular announcements I have for this morning. We're singing the Heartland Liturgy this morning, led by Grace Alive. So thank you for your leadership. And I'd invite you to stand as we turn to our order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way 
Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. And we join in singing, Earth is full of wit and wisdom. <clears throat> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. From above, we pray for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We pray for peace in the world. We pray for wellness in your church. We pray for the unity of all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We pray for this holy place. We pray for all who gather here. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Oh Lord, help us, save us. Oh Lord, comfort and defend us. Amen. 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 Amen.
Glory in the highest, glory be to God. Glory in the highest and peace to all the earth. Glory in the highest, glory be to God. Glory in the highest and peace to all the earth. Shaper of the universe, shaper of the universe. Thanks and praise we see. Thanks and praise we sing. Loving Father, caring Mother. Loving Father, caring Mother. Hold us in your wings. Hold us in your wings. Glory in the highest. Glory be to God. Glory in the highest and peace to all the earth. Glory in the highest. Glory. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. You wash our sins away. You wash our sins away. At your table, all are welcome. At your table, all are welcome. Hear us as we pray. Hear us as we pray. of life, Holy Spirit, source of life, burning wild and free, burning wild and free, you are God the three in one, you are God the three in one, such a mystery, such a mystery, glory in the highest, glory be to God, glory in the highest and peace to all the Glory in the highest, glory be to God. Glory in the highest and peace to all the earth. Together let us pray. <coughs> o Lord God, your mercy delights us and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, the children are invited up for the children's reading. For those of you joining us at home, we are on page 360 in the Story Bible. All right, good morning. I have a question for you guys this morning. If you saw someone who was hurt, what would you do? Help them? What if you saw someone who was hungry? Feed them? Okay. What about if you um, saw someone who was cold? Give them a blanket? Good job. Our story today has a question in it from a man who was trying to trick Jesus. He was trying to get him to say the wrong thing. And so Jesus told us a story about the Good Samaritan. Um, and the Good Samaritan is the one in the story like you guys who wanted to help. Okay? So it says, A clever man who thought he was for living God's way asked Jesus a question. He wanted to see if he could trick Jesus into giving the wrong answer. with God. Jesus asked another question. What do the commandments say? The commandments say you should love God and you should love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied, that's the right answer. This and you will be with God forever. So Jesus, the man continued, who's my neighbor? Jesus answered that question with a story. A man was traveling down a scary and rocky road by himself. 
All of a sudden, a group of men jumped out, and they stole his money, and they hurt him, leaving him by the side of the road. He moaned and groaned in pain. He couldn't get up. A little while later, a priest was going down the road. Do you know what a priest is? What's a priest? Oh, that's a good guess. Like a man? Oh, God? Yep. Yeah. Um, kind of like Pastor Siri. Kind of like a pastor. opposite side of the road. So did he hurt it, or did he help him? No. Can you imagine Pastor Siri doing that? Walking down the road, and she just ignores somebody who's hurt? No, I don't think she would do that. But this priest did. It says, later, another man came along and passed on the other side of the road, too. When a Samaritan came along and saw the man who hurt, he stopped to help him. A tear ran down the Samaritan's cheek as he bent down to help the hurt man. He put bandages on the man's cuts. The Samaritan huffed and puffed as he tried to lift the man onto his donkey. See him in there? He took the man to the nearest inn and put him in a room. Do you know what an inn is? Like a hotel, yeah. He took care of him for the rest of that day. The next day, the Samaritan had to leave for a few days. He paid the innkeeper to take care of the hurt man. The Samaritan paid, promised to return and pay the innkeeper for any more money that was needed to care for the man. He wanted the hurt man to return. As he came to the city of Jesus' work, he asked the woman, Did you say these three men were the neighbor to the man who was hurt? The man replied, The one who sought to help him. Jesus told him, God wants everyone to help everyone. People of every size and shape and color, from every country. that make you feel really sad? Yeah. And so you guys already knew the answer in the beginning of the story. So I even read it to you. But if you see someone who's hurt, you should help them, right? Or if they're hungry, not just if they're hurt, if they're hungry or if they're cold or if they need new shoes or what else? What's another way you could help someone? Teach them about God? Good answer, yeah. What about um, acts of service? Not just giving people things. This man take help take care of him what if someone needed help cleaning their house their room what do you think could you help that way mm-hmm. yeah god wants us to help anyone we come across any way we can we want to be like the samaritan right not we don't want to be like the people who walked by and didn't care for them right all right so today i want you to or this week i want you to see if you can find a way to help someone this week can you be like the samaritan this week all right thanks The first reading today is from Deuteronomy 30, verses 9 through 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord again take, for the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Colossians 1, verses 1 through 14. 
Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Christ Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has been made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pre pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be, be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while fully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near to him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And he said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Questions. Questions. Today's text is full of questions. Um, there's a lot in this parable. We could talk about a lot of different things, but today I'm going to talk about 
questions. And the lawyer has questions for Jesus. And Jesus has questions for the lawyer, right? And we grow in our faith when we ask questions. That's a way that we grow. And Jesus helps us to grow in faith by asking us questions. And I think a key to this growth is asking the right questions. Now we know there are no right or wrong questions, good or bad questions, right? We've been told that since we started school and a teacher tells us there's no bad questions. Just ask your questions, no matter what they are. Um, but what I mean by the right questions is, is asking um, a question from the point of view that grows our faith. And then if we ask a not quite right question to do that, Jesus will get us to the point of asking the right question, right? The one that will help us to grow in our faith and in doing the will of God. That's what he does for this lawyer who is asking questions. He gets them to ask different questions and to consider a different thing. So the lawyer first asked, of course, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus doesn't just give him an answer, but asks him a question. <laughs> Jesus does that a lot. When you ask Jesus a question, he's going to ask you a question. All right, but he says, well, what do you already know? What's written? What have you learned? And the lawyer knows this one. He knows this one. Right? He says, you love God with heart, soul, strength, and mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself. Right? The great commandment on which all the other commandments of God are based. So he... He knows the answer. But then he wants to put some boundaries around the answer, like say, what are the limits of this love of God and neighbor? And so then he asked, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Now this is a good question, but it's not the question that's going to get him to go deeper in his faith. And so Jesus, as he tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, gets the man to maybe consider a better question. So in, he gets him to ask, really, the how rather than the who. Right? How can I be a neighbor who loves rather than who is the neighbor I'm supposed to love? How can I be a neighbor? Right? And that's a question that opens us up more to possibilities, the how, rather than kind of closing things down by saying who, what are the limits? Right, so Jesus is always going to try to get us to open ourselves up to something bigger, God's bigger work. And this week, um, there were a few quotes that just came my way. They just seemed to come. I'd read them or see them online or uh, something, and, and they were all kind of heading in the same direction, sort of this, how am I a neighbor? Um, and I always say, this is kind of an aside, if you hear kind of the same thing or see the same thing from more than one place, you're supposed to pay attention to it, no matter what it is in your life. If you're trying to make a decision in your life, if you're hearing something coming from, that's, a, that's God leading you. So, so I was following these quotes. So I'll share some of these. And the first one came from Pope Francis. Um, and it was shared actually by Dave Stotts online. <laughs> he had posted it online and I thought, oh, I like this. But um, um, so Pope Francis says, that being a neighbor, or I would call it the word neighboring, is, is it's actually the way of nature. Right? It's the way the world was created to be a neighbor. And so Pope Francis said, rivers do not drink their own water, trees do not eat their own fruit, the sun does not shine on itself, and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other, no matter how difficult it is. Life is good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. Right? Neighboring is what we were created for, what we were born for, or maybe we would say what we were reborn for. As we were reborn as children of God, we were made into neighbors, neighbors who love, and that's our nature. That's just how things are. And neighboring isn't only just part of the natural world, but it's the way of discipleship. It's what Jesus calls us to. It's how we show our love for God, who has first loved us. And so there's a New Testament scholar, uh, Janine K. Brown, and she notes this in the second quote that I came across this week. 
And so she's writing about this story. She says, by being so concerned about who qualified as his neighbor, the Torah expert, or the lawyer, neglected to consider, consider whether he himself was acting like a neighbor. We hear this discipleship value in Jesus' final words, go and do likewise. In other words, show mercy. Those who follow Jesus are to take on the role of neighbor to others, especially those in need and in desperate circumstances. Right? We are to be a neighbor, and the question we ask is how? How might I be that loving neighbor? Not who am I supposed to love, but how do I love those who are around me, all those who are around me? Well, and the last quote that, that came my way is from Martin Luther King in a speech that he gave in Memphis when he went there to support striking uh, garbage haulers right back in, in the 60s. And he used this parable in his speech to make a point about how our neighbors need us to be about neighboring, about loving. So King said, and you know, it's possible that the priest and the Levite looked over at the man on the ground and wondered if the robbers were still around. Or it's possible that they felt that the man on the ground was merely faking, right? And he was acting like he had been robbed and hurt in order to seize them over there, lure them there for a quick and easy seizure. And so the first question that the Levite asked himself was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But then the Good Samaritan came by and he reversed the question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? And then King goes on and he says, that's the question before you tonight, not if I stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to all of the hours that I usually spend in my office every day and every week as a pastor. The question is not if I stop to help this man in need, what will happen to me? But if I do not stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to them? Right? That's the question. What will happen if we are not neighbors? If we are not about um, asking, how can I help my neighbor? And then Matt Skinner, a seminary professor who was the one citing this quote of King's, he added another question. And he says, if I do not stop to help, what will happen to me? Right? If we start limiting ourselves, and how we love and who we love and how we care for those around us. What happens to us? Really what happens is, is that we close ourselves off. We turn inward, turn away. Right? When we ask, well, who is my neighbor? What are the limits? We close ourselves off. But when we ask that question, how, and take up that calling that we have to love our neighbors, we open ourselves up to discover the richness of God's grace and love and life in us and in the world. The parable of the Good Samaritan answers that how question that Jesus leads us to. That question is the one that grows us deeper in discipleship and faith, for it's the one that opens us up to something more rather than setting a limit, which is what the, why, or the who question does. You know, this is what leads to life. And this is what Jesus did for us. He came and loved us. And he didn't ask the question, well, who is it, God, that I'm supposed to love as God comes to earth? But how do I love? And he loved so much that he gave his life. He died and rose again, defeating all our enemies, that we might know mercy and grace. When we were dead in sin, Jesus stopped for us and lifted us up and carried us to the place where we might know life. And because he did, we have mercy. We have life. And then he calls us to love. He calls us to do the same for our neighbor. And so the question that we are left with this, this week is, how might I be the loving neighbor? So ask God to show you those opportunities this week as to how you might be the loving neighbor 
And as you seek to answer that question and live out that question, you will know a greater depth and richness of the grace and love and mercy that you have already received from Christ. Amen. Let's stand as we sing. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. God of grace, hear our prayer. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. Continue to be with all those who have been affected by storms, those affected by droughts and floods, um, and, and restore and renew the earth in places that have been damaged. God of grace, hear our prayer. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, religious profiling and discrimination. 
Bring your peace in all the world, Lord, especially to Ukraine. God of grace, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty, hope where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, comfort where there is death, and healing in illness. And we especially pray for those we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list, including Marge, Roger, Kurt, and Merlin. Sustain Vivian and her family as they mourn the death of Jeff. God of grace, hear our prayer. Turn this community towards neighbor in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. God of grace, hear our prayer. And we give you thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to greet those around you with Christ's peace, and please also turn to the camera above the booth to greet those who are worshiping in their homes and at their cabins and in their campgrounds. <laughs> so peace to you. And then you may be seated. I do want to say thank you to you for your tithes and for your offerings. Your gifts are doing ministry in Jesus' name through this congregation. And if you brought an offering with you today, you can leave it on the, in the offering plate, which will be on the usher table just inside the center doors of, as you come into the sanctuary. And as we sing our offering song, if there are kids with noisy offering, they can bring it up to the milk can here while we sing. Together we pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection 
open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we join in the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready and all are invited to the table of the Lord. Once the servers are prepared, the ushers will direct you forward to receive God's grace.
Would you stand? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hosanna to the King.